Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. Russell, good to, to see you back. Nice, yeah. it's been a while. Good to see you, Vikram. You've been uh, really busy with a lot of things, obviously with work. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what I'm really interested in catching up, and I'm because I just don't, I don't know what uh, the outcome of uh, all of this has been, is that you were recently attending and presenting at the dermatology conference here in uh, Australia, in Perth, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was in Perth, it was last weekend, and I have some really interesting research that is a kind of like Australian well-first research yeah. that's going to be relevant to our audience oh. uh, and to us as treating doctors. And that is that historically we have seen patients come to us, usually young men, and often come in with a parent, um, usually a father, and they say, I'm really worried, I've noticed a sudden increase in shedding hairs. Mm. Now, obviously our patients think that shedding hairs means hair loss. And we normally try to reassure them yes. that if you're shedding long hairs, they're healthy hairs and therefore they will grow back. But what was interesting with this World First research is that they tracked the growth phase of the hair follicles of age-matched people that were, you know, with no families of uh, male pattern um, hair loss and families of male pattern hair loss. And what they found following people is that the growth phase, which we call the antigen phase, reduced on average by 30% before there was any evidence of miniaturization of the hair follicles. So it's like the trigger. So right. they, they're saying it incites, you know, the, the, it's the, kind of the trigger to start the male pattern hair loss. And we had not really, we'd seen that, but I'd always thought, well, it could be, you know, because sudden increase in hair shedding can be from a number of causes, yes. fevers, yeah, change yeah. of diet, you know, stress. Also, we know that in male pattern hair loss, about 40% of our patients have inflammatory reactions in the skin. And we know that the inflammation shortens the growth phase as well. So this could be all linked, that there's an inflammatory reaction going on in the scalp. Uh, there's an increase in shedding rate, but you haven't yet seen miniaturization or the shrinkage of the hair follicles. So this has implications because now we have to think about why they've got increased shedding. And is it the start of the male pattern hair loss, even though we can't really see the shrinking? Yeah. So the implication for us is, how do we treat this? Well, I've been thinking about this for the last week and I think the answer is that probably the safest thing to do is to recommend minoxidil mm. to these patients because we know that minoxidil increases the growth phase. Right? So we're trying to fight that growth phase and it's kind of like something you can do without committing them to having to put enzyme blockers or yes. something in the system. And so I think that it's a kind of a gentler start, it's a more acceptable start, and it doesn't panic the patient as much as telling them, well, you're about to start miniaturizing hair and therefore we have to get mm. busy. But clearly we can't send them away for any great length of time uh, just on that. So it's sort of like, okay, let's start you on some minoxidil, and I would usually use oral minoxidil because I just find the compliance is better. They, yes. they just are so much better at taking it if you give it to them. And they don't feel like it has any potential side effects that are gonna worry a young mm. man. Um, so I think that's going to be a good starting point. And then we get them back at six months and we have a look and we take some careful photography or we take some careful measurements of the hairline or whatever and we have a, a careful look again on the camera at six months. So I think that in these young men where we see no miniaturization but we do see this increase in shedding, I think the correct uh, treatment algorithm from then is going to be started with minoxidil. So I think that's going to be, make a huge difference in, in how we practice because I mean, you and I are very conservative or you know, always have been from that perspective. And one of the fundamental things that we've been doing is, you know, looking, Look, at, the, looking, for look, miniaturization. Yes, looking at the patient in front of us, taking a history, looking for miniaturization. Mm -hmm. And we will look at it from a macro perspective. We will look at it from a micro perspective. So we use high power magnification with a you know, video microscope and, and we can see if there's uh, miniaturization. There are obviously there are more complex and you know, extravagant devices which will measure hair density. I still think we have well. the ability to do a bit of a differential diagnosis mm -hmm. on this. So for example, if someone comes in, they've got increased shedding. I had a fever two months ago. Yes. You know, I had a car accident two months ago. I suddenly lost weight. I had surgery. I had an anesthetic. I think we still can sort of think in the terms that there are trigger factors that aren't just male pattern hair loss. Yeah. But if we see a young man with a bad family history of male pattern hair loss coming in with no trigger factors that we can think of, but a sudden increase in or a serious increase in shedding, I think we have to think that that's the trigger. And is this true for both men and women, or they only studied men? Uh, well, they studied the men. Yes. But, it, but we also do get um, women who come in. But the the, the trick, tricky part with women is that 
there is the acute, you know, um, malt or yes. telogen effluvium, which we, by definition means that lasts less than six months. And then there's another one that we see more in women than we see in men, which we call chronic telogen effluvium or chronic shedding. And that goes on for years, but there's no miniaturization. There's just mm. increased shedding. And so basically the hair cycle shortened a bit, but nothing else is happening. And they just keep si more the more cycle hair. sped up. And it panics them, and they often have some of the symptoms that you get with these, like that tenderness or the itch or the burning of the mm. scalp, which suggests that there's an inflammatory reaction going on in the scalp. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily deteriorate them because unless they've got a strong family history of pattern hair loss in the females in their family, I think we're more inclined to be a bit more conservative with them. But I think that we have to have a high index of suspicion when we have young men in front of us with a bad family history. Yes. So just for, you know, someone who's probably coming in relatively new in terms of knowledge, you know, there's this whole concept of the telogen effluvium, which is just shedding mm -hmm. of hair. And for large parts, we don't know what the cause is. I mean, no. there, there are, uh, you know, certain things that we do know can influence and turn off the hair cycle, you know, sudden weight loss yes. or, or medications uh, illness, illness or... medications. Mm. And uh, that was, mm. yeah, and now we're in, including... And we're uh, adding this into the differential diagnosis, mm. but I think that where I'm going to have high index of suspicion, as I said, is if they come in with a bad family history of hair loss. Yes. And even if I can't see any miniaturization, but uh, there is just a sudden increase in shedding. I'm going to start to take, say, well, okay, this could be the start of yeah. um, the family problem. And the way we're going to start with this is with minoxidil. Yes. And so not can, committing them to... No, not uh, committing them to everything. Yes. Just use minoxidil. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that for the next six months. And you come back and check. And, of course, these are the people that will come back. I mean, yes. They're not going to ignore it um, mm -hmm. uh, because they can be very worried about it. But it's a kind of a gentle way to introduce them into the process. And this was a big study? Uh, over uh, about, uh, what was it, 350 um, people. So pretty powerful, pretty... Uh, pretty the numbers were good, Yeah, not a small study. So that's really good because, I mean, I love things when you can go, right, okay, I can feel how this is going to change my practice and really be able to... Well, it was a big uh, learning moment for me. Uh, yeah. And I was really grateful that I, that, that I was there for it because um, it comes out of a credible, it comes out of a credible uh, researcher. It's not... You know, they do a lot of hair research. It's the yes. premier hair research team in Australia. And they, um, and they do a lot of hair research. And it was presented uh, on the same panel that I was on last week. So I thought that was pretty powerful. Very good. Well, I think that's going to be that really interesting. And so that's a really big proponent for making sure that you, if you are experiencing shedding, if you've got a, uh, a strong family history, then probably getting assessed sooner rather than and later when you as well. Talk, and when you talk to the doctor, because this is as I said, it's brand new information, when yes. you talk to the doctor, say there is an Australian study that suggests that the increased hair shedding often precedes any evidence of miniaturization of the hair follicles. So can we please you know, be yes. aware of that? And have a look. Mm. Fantastic. Oh, that's really good. I'm really, uh, really glad that you were able to uh, be there and, and present on that. And I hope you found that useful as well. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you on the, the next episode. And please remember to like and subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks very much, everyone.